Good morning, everyone. This is Michelle Gerges with the New Day Church, and I'm bringing you God's Word this morning. And do you know why I'm excited? Because God dropped this word into my heart several weeks ago. We can't see the future. We don't know what's coming up. But the last two people that spoke in our church were Dr. Dan Justice and Pastor Tom. And if you go back and listen to their words um, that they spoke on, you're going to see that that laid the foundation for what I'm going to speak on today. The title of my message is Praising God Through the Pain. Praising God through the suffering. This is a hard subject because we all go through pain at different times of our life. We all go through suffering. And what do we do with that? As baby Christians, we, are, we can be emotional and everything that we feel at the moment we react to. But God is calling us to get past um, just drinking milk and getting into the meat of being a Christian, getting into the meat of the Word of God, and moving past the emotions of what we're feeling, and pr learning to praise Him through the pain. It's such a victorious way to live. We're all practicing it. None of us have attained it, but we can practice it. And I'm gonna give you some practical ways to do that this morning. Everyone suffers. Everyone has pain in their lives. Some of us could be on the mountaintop right now. Some are halfway up in the mountain and some are deep in the valley. But we'll all go through those stages of life. It's inevitable. It will happen. The way we get through it is we praise the Lord in spite of our pain. His loving kindness and goodness will sustain, it, will sustain us. And do you know what? We are not the first to suffer. All the saints before us have suffered. Jesus himself suffered the ultimate price, giving his life in the most painful way. Not only physically painful with the nails through his wrists and his feet, but emotionally, spiritually painful. He was betrayed. He was abandoned. So he knows every pain that we go through. So don't let your pain turn into bitterness. This is a big one and we're going to go to the scripture because it advises on this subject. Ephesians 4 31 says get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander along with every form of malice. So God tells us for us not to let our pain turn into bitterness. Bitterness is a tool of the devil. Bitterness sends us into isolation and hiding and anger in our hearts. And that is not profitable. That doesn't lead us forward as Christians. In The Chosen, if you haven't seen The Chosen, um, I encourage you to watch it. It took us years to watch it because I thought it was gonna be like any other show, but it's not. It's actually fantastic. In The Chosen, season four, episode three, I encourage you to watch it. There's a scene where King David's son is very sick and he goes into praying 24 seven fasting. He refuses to eat for six days and he is praying that God will restore his son and that his son won't die. Well, that didn't happen. God had a different plan and King David had a choice at that point. He could become bitter, angry, turn his back on God, or he could trust the plan. He could trust that God knows what he's doing and he has perfect timing for everything. And just because we want something a certain way, it's not always his perfect will. And I think if we can learn as Christians to accept that and mature in this way, not that it won't be painful, not that it won't be horrible to go through, but to not turn our backs on God. And in this, in, in the chosen, in this episode, I wrote down some of the words that King David said after his son died. He said, 
Sometimes our prayers are not answered in the way we want. We praise him anyway. We worship through sorrow, joy, and sorrow again. Sometimes that's the cycle of our life. This is the meaning of faith. Our loved ones will not return to us, but we will go to them. The separation is just for now, for a time. And then King David rose up and he went to dinner. His wife, and this, this, what I just read was an answer to his wife's question. How can you go eat now? How can you be with people? And he said, because God did what he did and I accept it. And just what a beautiful way to live. We can learn so much from this. And I am going to read Psalm 103, which uh, King David wrote. And I'm going to read, um, I am just going to read it because it is so beautiful and just addresses what we're talking about. Psalm 103. Praise the Lord, my soul, all my inmost being. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion. Who wasn't in the pit? I was in the pit before Jesus found me. I suppose I found him. He was always with me. Who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works right, righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. So I'll, I'll come back to some of Psalm 103, but these are some of David's words in the midst of his pain and his suffering. It is easy to trust God when all is going well for us. But what about when the suffering comes? Do we still trust him? We need to learn to praise him in the pain. This is how we get through it. Loving God, even when it hurts. Our good friend, Dar Darlene Justice, um, she's Dr. Dan's mom, one of our teachers at a New Day Church. And Darlene lost her daughter-in-law and Dr. Dan lost his wife recently. And she posted this. The deepest level of worship is pra praising God in spite of pain, trusting him during a trial, surrendering while suffering and loving him when he seems distant. That was just so beautiful. Pain is inevitable. It's part of life. None of us can escape it, just like none of us can escape death. What you do with the pain in each time that pain comes in our life is our choice because everyone will go through pain. Pain prompts us to face who we are and where we are. What we do with that experience defines who we become. That's why there's like splits in the road when very painful things happen to us and we can go down the dark road or we can go down the road of light. And I encourage you to find someone that you can look up to and who can mentor you, and you can watch how they live their lives as they go through pain. My husband, Ted, and I have done that. We've attached to people that are stronger than we are, have walked this walk longer than we are, have shown us how to walk through pain. Not that there's not dark days, days of despair, but they don't stay there. And it teaches us, and that's how we mature as Christians. I am going to read James 1, 2 through 4. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Wow, is that counterintuitive. Joy is not the first emotion that comes to me. But again, joy is not an emotion. It's a choice. So consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, 
not lacking anything. Back to that word again, mature. Maturing as Christians, coming out of that baby stage where everything we feel, we respond to. We panic, we're scared, we have anxiety, we have depression, and we respond to that. And the Lord's calling us to go to that next level of maturity in Him and not let it be an emotional response, but a choice to accept that pain and suffering are part of this life and that we can have joy through it. I am going to read Romans 8, 18. And that says, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. So I love that this just isn't me saying, oh, this is how we're supposed to live our lives. The Bible tells us that our pres present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. So that glory is coming. It is, and our time on this earth is so short. We all know it. We look at our kids and how fast they grew up, how fast our grandkids grew up, the different phases and seasons of life and how they pass. And eternity is no comparison because we will live in eternity. I have a couple more scriptures to read. We're going to go to 2 Corinthians 4, 17 and 18. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Why are there so many scriptures on this topic? It's because God knew we would have pain and we would have, have suffering on this imperfect world that we live in. And he's giving us direction. He's giving us guidance in how to deal with these things when they come, when we have pain. Because our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us eternal glory that far outweighs, exceeds anything we're going through on this earth. And as humans, we're very inclined um, to just whatever we feel right at this moment, we, we react to. And it's like um, instant gratification rather than waiting for what God is going to do. And he's teaching us this if we get into his word and look what he has to say. In 1 Peter 5.10, the word of God says, and the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. That is a promise right there in 1 Peter 5.10. Put it on a sticky, put it on your mirror, read it, tuck it into your heart and into your spirit. So I'm going to leave you with a couple of things. So this is um, from Let Us Worship. Sean Fioit put out a post. What I have learned that may be beneficial to you. And these points really hit home with me, and I hope they hit home with you. Always, number one, always follow God's voice and never, ever shrink back for a moment. So the biblical truths that we know, the biblical worldview that is in the Bible, the things that we know, never shrink back from those things because we will regret it. God wants us to live with passion and conviction. Number two, build meaning build our ministry, build our life with childlike, servant-hearted, and optimistic warriors. I love that. We choose the people in our life, who we want to surround ourselves with and spend time with. And what he's learned, childlike, that's always good because Jesus loves children. They have pure hearts. Servant-hearted. So many of us know people that are just takers and not givers. And we, we need to still minister to those people and be there for them. But that's not who we should surround ourselves with. 
surround ourselves with servant hearted and optimistic warriors. This is how you get through pain and suffering, building your life on these principles. Number three, coming back to bitterness. Flee from those who are bitter, stressed, and complain all the time. They will take you down. Not that we don't get stressed, that we don't complain, but people that live there, we all know them. If we surround ourselves with those people, they will drag us down. Go back to the scripture in Ephesians 4.31 to, to let bitterness go. Let it flee from you. So flee from those who are bitter, stressed, and complain all the time. Number four, don't apologize for your, and this is in quotes, grace for the pace. You have it and others will not. So that just speaks basically saying, you know, the flow of ministry and the things that you are doing. You do it at the pace that God asks you to do it at. We don't have to go any faster or slower because of pressure of people. Let's be in tune with God and the pace that he wants us to take in life. Number five, protect the vision from those wanting to dilute, change, or sidetrack it. So our vision that God has given us for our lives, for our ministry, for our families, any of those things, protect the vision. They're, the world wants to dilute it, change it, and sidetrack it. But the truth is the truth, and it never changes. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It's not what's going on in the times, um, right now what we're living. That's not the truth. The truth will always be the same. Number six, obedience is success, not attendance, clicks, donations, or hype. I love that. If we're obedient to what God has called us to do, that is success. Not how many views. The, the only reason a New Day Church is interested in views is because every view is a soul. It's a, it's a person that is trying to, to connect with God. But that does not define our success. Our obedience to what he has asked each individual to do and our gifts, our talents, what he has called us to is individual to you. Don't try to mimic someone else. Do what, you, what God has put in your heart to do. Number seven, there is a joy in every fight. Find the joy and work to sustain it. That kind of comes back full circle to what I was talking about earlier. Finding the joy and allowing that to bubble up within us in spite of the pain and suffering. And we have to work to sustain it. It doesn't come naturally for anybody. Just like um, people will say, oh, you know, like people who are physically, um, you know, uh, work out and do hard things. Oh, that just comes easy to you. That isn't true. It comes through discipline and hard work and choice. The same with the spiritual things that we face. I'm gonna close with this. Last Friday was August 16th, and it was a very special day because it is the anniversary, I believe the 44th anniversary of our lead pastors, Pastor Mark and Carmen Yaden. And we love them so much. We celebrate that special day with them. But August 16th is also a very difficult day for Pastor Mark and Carmen, the family, all of us that knew and loved Daniel Mark Yaden. Daniel went to be with the Lord a year ago, this last Friday. And if anything signifies or embodies a prayer not being answered in the way we wanted, it was losing Daniel at 36 years old to a long and hard, horrible battle with cancer. But Daniel did it with grace, with love. He taught us so much. The time that I spent with him, I learned so much. God didn't answer our prayers in the way we wanted, but we continue to trust him and we follow the example of Pastor Mark and Carmen as they've gone through this year of grieving and losing their son. It's one of the most difficult things that we have been through at a New Day Church, that his family's been through, but we trust God in spite of the pain, in spite of the suffering. 
because he's a good God and we trust him and that he needed Daniel in heaven sooner than we wanted and we're learning to mature through this to show our pain and our emotion but not stay there not be bitter not be bitter against God for what he chose to do because Daniel has a new body and he has no more pain or suffering or sorrow or grief or any of it and his mom Carmen loves this song we can't play it because of copyright rules but I'm gonna read some of it it's scars in heaven by casting crowns I encourage you to go listen to that song if I had only known the last time would be the last time I would have put off all the things I had to do I would have stayed a little longer held on a little tighter now what I'd give for one more day with you because there's a wound here in my heart where something's missing and they tell me it's gonna heal with time but I know you're in a place where all your wounds have been erased and knowing yours are healed is healing mine the only scars in heaven, they won't belong to me and you. There'll be no such thing as broken, and all the old will be made new. And the thought that makes me smile now, even as the tears fall down, is that the only scars in heaven are on the hands that hold you now. Thank you, Jesus. I know the road you walked was anything but easy. You picked up your share of scars along the way. Oh, but now you're standing in the sun. You fought your fight and your race is run. The pain is all a million miles away. And then it goes through the chorus. The only scars in heaven, they won't belong to me and you. There'll be no such thing as broken and the old will be made new. And the thought that makes me smile now, even as the tears fall down, is that the only scars in heaven, yeah, are on the hands that hold you now. For the hands that hold you now, there's not a day goes by that I don't see you. You live on in all the better parts of me. And that is so true that all that knew and loved Daniel, his goodness, the better parts of me live on in Daniel live on in us until I'm standing with you in the sun I'll fight this fight fight in this race I'll run until I finally see what you can see that was a song that Carmen was playing the day that we were there when Daniel passed and that's a beautiful song and we hold on to that because our loved ones that have gone before us that knew Jesus that's why it's so important that our number one priority is to share the good news of what Jesus did to allow us to enter heaven so that we can have that hope for eternity and I encourage you to find joy to praise him through the pain through the suffering it's such a better way to live our lives and God is faithful and he is true and he his promises never return void and we will spend eternity with him and our pain and suffering will be over thank you for letting me share this word that was on my heart this morning I love each and every one of you so much don't be afraid to hug your loved ones to tell them to go out and share the good news. We have the good news. We have the cure to cancer. We do. We have the ultimate cure because we will be in heaven. So don't be ashamed of the gospel. Go out and preach it from the mountaintop. God bless you.